Welcome to On The Chain. Let's listen to this and let me know your thoughts after this, please. To wrap this year and all of my interaction with Ripple executives tell me that they are absolutely 100% confident the SEC case is going to end in their favor. All of their customers I spoke with who are already using ODL don't even care as far as about the SEC case. They're doing their own thing in their own markets. They couldn't care less. And and those that are with Oh, this is Nick Birfato speaking right here. So in case you, that wasn't evident to everybody. Waiting to use ODL, we're extremely optimistic for a favorable outcome. So listen, we appreciate all of our investing members. If you're a Link2 member. And and that was it. So obviously he's with Link2, but there you go, Jeff. It's kind of, he's like from all the Ripple executives, they believe that they're going to win this and it's going to be a favorable outcome. Weird. I didn't hear you anything win. about settlement in that. I didn't think like we talked to the Ripple executives and they're pretty absolutely secure that they're going to, you know, for sure yeah. going to be settling this. Ed, here's what the Fed's up to, Chip. The New York Fed launches digital dollar pilot program with big banks. That's what they're up to. They're trying to compete. It, the timing of everything is very interesting. You know, you could say, uh, hmm. say unusually interesting. Hmm. Uh, you could say it's coincidental. Um, but nine U.S. financial institutions, including Citibank, Wells Fargo, and MasterCard, and we know that MasterCard's up to some things within the crypto space lately, launched a pilot program working with the Federal Reserve Bank in New York to test the feasibility of a digital dollar based on distributed ledger technology. So that's interesting that they want to have it based on uh, distributed ledger technology, but it's really the timing of this. Look, at it's going to run for 12 weeks in a test environment, will involve central banks, commercial banks and not and, and regulated non-banks so they're going to use the ledger tech so what their own that's CBDC. what I, my, my thought is so what's, the, what's what? the end goal yeah what's, what's the, the outcome of this well what's the purpose of a digital dollar anyway there we have a digital dollar just changing the name of it and printing more of something else with a different name is the same thing you still have fiat it? it's still gonna it's still gonna have it's still gonna be inflationary yeah and look at all these banks Look, I don't blame the banks, you know, I mean, like I sometimes think that the, the we got to kind of draw that line between a bank and what a bank's trying to do. I'm not saying all banks, but I'm saying the bank, a, ser a service a bank's trying to do, right? Especially, but the federal, the, the, the federal reserve or the central bank, the one, and if you look at the uh, European central bank, they're making all these rules for everybody. And it's just like, it's, it's a dead instrument. Doesn't make sense for any country. I mean, why would you want to say, okay, I borrow, I buy, borrow one instrument of a fiat currency, whatever, whatever that looks like, the, you know, a dollar, an Australian dollar, you know, a yen, whatever that looks like, right? A pound, a euro, and then you all of a sudden have to borrow another one because you've got to pay the debt on the the first one that you purchased, you borrowed, and you're and it's a debt instrument. So the true, I think, where we get to with, I think, where we're going to get with crypto is that's going to, we're going to basically get to a point where all of this is going to go away. We're going to have, you know, a DAOs could potentially, you know, replace governments. And then also you look at how great the true cryptocurrency and a true sovereign currency for every country where the country is actually in control of the currency. And I'm not talking about CBDCs. That's not part of it. I'm just talking about having a digital, an instrument, you know, that's more akin to crypto and less akin to that central bank digital that's currency. Central. Yeah. And so one, one common theme here, Chip, that we're seeing. And so as we're referencing, you know, this, uh, again, the timing is very, uh, suspect, um, but here you have, so the Biden administration has recommended the creation of the digital dollar, right? They want it. Who else recommended it? Oh yeah, that's right. Um, China the, with the digital you want a lot of other countries have China. as well. So here we've got France, Switzerland, Singapore, had a uh, they all had a, a joint trial for digital currencies. Um, why? Because of cross border transaction, uh, which is really critical. One of the things uh, that Ripple is solving with the XRP ledger and has already solved it. Mm -hmm. You know, if it, it so here the bottom line: White House is recommending the creation of a digital dollar. Here's I didn't pull this article, but I think it was really interesting to comment again the timing of it. The article was focused on the fact that the majority of the big banks in the U.S. lack liquidity. So they don't have the liquidity uh, needed and necessary 
So what is going to be happening here? Why, why now? Why are they focused on this digital dollar? Why and what was the motivation uh, behind FTX, its rise and its fall in such a short period of time? You know, was it all focused in and around uh, SBF? Was he the mastermind behind all of this? Or are some of the, uh, the string pullers uh, still uh, present and sitting in the halls of Congress and also chairing certain organizations? Yeah, it's man, you know, it's it's almost it's almost as if it was planned. I mean, we could almost think like, geez, this sounds like it's almost a coordinated type of a plan, doesn't it? I mean, it just seems like it's a little bit too uh, just the whole idea of how this stuff happened. It's like, oh, this wait, with this collapsed, and then oh, then we got the digital dollar coming out, and then there's it's almost like there's a somebody has a calendar and they're just ticking off the days. Here's um Warren Davidson on Charles Payne talking about this whole thing was Jay Clayton or Gary Gensler, they told everyone in the space, come talk to the SEC and work out your deal. What people found out was there was no escape path. Once you come in and talk to the uh, SEC, you're in endless discovery. And at this point, it's really hard to see how the SEC hasn't engaged in selective enforcement. I mean, they were collaborating closely with the, uh, you know, FTX, with Sam Bankman-Fried, and so was the CFTC. Meanwhile, they're going after Kim Kardashian. Yeah. You're like, really? Yeah. You got Kardashian, but you didn't get this FTX fraud? Well, he's bringing up something important there, Jeff. He, he talks about the whole idea of you go in and talk to him, and the same thing happened in library, four years of nonstop discovery, right? Same thing with Ripple, nonstop, dis nonstop discovery. Discovery is when they start asking for financials and trades and what you're doing. They start looking underneath the, uh, the hood, and they start asking. That's the discovery. But weirdly enough, Warren Davidson makes an excellent point. He was talking with Sam Bankman-Fried, having meetings with them, and they weren't having any discovery with FTX. So yeah, if it smells to high heaven, if it looks like a duck, sounds like a duck, you can kind of guess what the next bit of that's going to be. Boom. But he does bring up that Boom. correlation. Boom. Yeah, baby. Boom. So Boom. <laughs> brings it up. And he does make that correlation. It's like, it's great because, as you guys know, um, both Tom Emmer, we played that clip earlier, and Warren Davidson crushed their opponents, right? They won by like 20, 25 points. They both were reelected. They're both at the forefront, along with a lot of other folks in uh, in the House. The House is, when the, well, let's see what the new makeup of the Financial Services Committee. Um, I'd like to see one of these guys take over. Well, obviously, Tom Emmer is the is the whip, so he's not, it wouldn't be probably be him as a committee. But whoever chairs that financial services committee, I hope it's one of the good crypto guys we've been talking a lot about. Yeah. Whether it's uh, Patrick Henry, whether it's uh, Patrick McHenry, or let's say Warren Davidson, but one of the good crypto guys that can get because and when he tweeted this out, he talked about it, he said, "I put my my uh, my legislation forward three plus years ago, the Token Taxonomy Act." Let's pass the token taxonomy. Why not? You pass that token taxonomy, everything instantly becomes better overnight. Just like that, Jeff. Just like that, you know, and it and really, so with, they've been sitting on it. You know who's been sitting on it? Gary, the G-Man. Gary Gensler has been sitting on, you know, way too much. Congress has been sitting on way too much. You know who else has been sitting on way too much? And that is this woman right here. The one that Sam Bankman fried has his arm around in this picture. You know, she's uh, we have some clips of her, uh, you know, doing some other things, but she was the head of the financial services committee. She's the one who didn't even, you know, see uh, the token taxonomy act getting any discussion in committee. Uh, it just sat there. It was introduced. It was sent to the F uh, to the FSC and then nothing. Zero. Uh, it never progressed. Never got conversation. Nothing. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.